Hello, this is Kyle with Pure Storage, and today we're going to walk you through how to set up vSphere with Tanzu using the HA proxy method. Um, this is part one of a two part series. Uh, so, in this first section, what we're going to show you is we basically already got our pre prerequisites uh, deployed. We've got a front end network, we have a vMotion network, and we have a workload network that are all part of a distributed vSwitch. Um, then we have a standard uh, vSwitch that's going to host our management traffic. Um, in addition to that, we've already set up a few storage policy-based management uh, policies, um, one of them for v uh, VMFS. Um, we use tag-based rules there. Um, you can see we've already got a data store created that's been tagged and has had this policy assigned to it. And then the other one is using VVols. Um, the VVols one is using uh, pure storage uh, policies and basically just saying, is this a flash array? If so, yes. Um, and therefore that VVol data store applies as it is hosted on a flash array. Um, we've also set up a VMFS-based uh, content library that is uh, subscribed to the VMware Tanzu um, content URL. Um, VMFS is a requirement for content libraries, uh, at least as of today, which is January of 2021. And we can see that uh, this content library has already downloaded numerous uh, OVA and OVS templates uh, to be used by Tanzu. Um, the other thing you'll need is to actually download the HA proxy OVA itself, um, which is shown there. I've already done that. So we're going to go ahead and start to deploy this HA proxy OVA. Um, first thing you do is we've got it downloaded locally, so we'll select that. Um, we'll give it a unique name. I'll just give it HA proxy and then my initials. Uh, we'll go ahead and select a compute resource. We can see that there, which is our only cluster of three ESXi hosts. We'll accept the licensing terms. We're going to use the front end network, um, which are both on the same uh, VLAN. Um, and actually, we'll go ahead and deploy this on a VVOL data store. Um, so for management, we'll use our VM network, uh, workload and front end again are on the same VLAN, but um, we're gonna use the front end network, which will give it its own discrete um, VNIC. Uh, we'll go ahead and set a root password next. Um, I've already pre-populated this host name uh, within our DNS server, which you'll need to do. So go ahead and enter in the FQDN. Um, next, we'll put in the DNS IP address. Um, this will be our management IP address. Um, then we'll put in the management gateway. Uh, we'll put in the workload IP. It's important to note that this is CIDR. Uh, so you see that dash 24. Um, we'll put in the gateway for our workload IP. Again, the front end network is the same as our workload network. Um, so we'll just put a different IP address for that. Um, for load balancing, we're going to go ahead and put in, this is our load balancing range. We'll give it a 12 uh, addresses. So that's a dash 29 network. That's important to note that for later. Um, we'll use port 556, 5556, uh, and then we'll create an admin password uh, for workload management enablement. Um, all right, so we've got all of these things now entered, and we'll go ahead and deploy that HA proxy OVA file. Um, we see it there. Um, once it has uh, been deployed, we'll go ahead and power it on. Um, I will skip ahead a little bit here just to save time and uh, keep the length of this video uh, as minimal as possible. Um, we can see now it's powered on after a couple minutes. Our IP addresses uh, for um, PM network uh, workload and front end are all there. Um, we'll go ahead and SSH into it. We're now in there. If we do an IF config, um, we can see that we have management workload and front end networks all up and running. Uh, we'll go ahead and ping uh, the first couple IP addresses on that uh, load balancer network just to make sure those all work and they do so we're getting a ping back from those okay so with uh, the ha proxy vm now deployed we can now start to enable workload management um, we're using the vcenter network um, a different video will show how to do this with nsxt using vmware cloud foundation um, so we've already got the setup uh, as you can see it comes up as compatible um, we'll go ahead and use a smaller um, deployment of the supervisor cluster. Uh, we'll go ahead and deploy it on VVOLs, um, give it HA proxy name. Again, this is HA proxy type. Um, we'll put in the uh, management IP address, port 5556. Um, we'll give it that admin credential. Um, and then we'll go ahead and actually put out the range of the load balancer, that dash 29 network that we put in when we deployed the HA proxy VM itself. 
Um, we go back to our HA proxy VM. We can just cat the uh, certificate for it. Um, we'll see that here. That's in the etc. Uh, HA proxy uh, ca.crt file. So go ahead and cat that. Um, we'll go then uh, copy and paste uh, the cert file um, into our workload management enablement wizard. Uh, and then we can move on to the next step. Um, we'll then select our management network. Um, it does need five consecutive free IP addresses on that management network to work. Um, give it the subnet mask, the gateway, um, that DNS server. Um, go, I'm going to go ahead and put in my FQDN, or my, excuse me, my search domain, though you don't necessarily have to. Um, then I've got an NTP server uh, in this environment as well that I'm going to provide here. Uh, we next define our workload management network, or excuse me, our workload network. This is where all of our Kubernetes VMs are going to sit. Um, we select our workload port group, um, give it a gateway, the subnet, and then we carve out, we'll carve out a range of, uh, let's not say 100, we'll, we'll do, since this is more test dev, um, we'll give it 50 IP addresses to be used as part of the workload network. Okay. So now that we've got this set, uh, we'll go ahead and save that. So this is the network that our Kubernetes clusters are going to use. Um, we then select that content library, that VMFS-based content library. Very important to use VMFS for your content library. Um, then we go ahead and click Finish. Um, this takes anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes to configure. So again, I'm going to go ahead and, and skip ahead a little bit here in the interest of saving time. Um, but you'll see it sit on this configuring screen for quite a while. Um, it does create a resource group called namespaces and my three supervisor cluster nodes will be deployed into that. You'll probably see a few errors that are showing up in the recent task screen on the bottom there. Um, you can usually safely ignore those. Um, and then after again, about 45 minutes, we see that uh, our workload management is up and running. And then if you just go to HTTPS and then your, uh, uh, your supervisor cluster node, uh, you get to this screen, which is where you will actually download and configure your Cube control uh, CLI tools, um, and there's instructions on how to do that here. Uh, part two, we'll show you how to deploy a Tanzu Kubernetes cluster and then a MySQL VM. Uh, more information, please check out uh, this QR code or this URL for a bunch more information on VMware solutions. Thank you for watching.